Hi people, with this stunning cover, we are going to be talking about Bon Smith by Nikki Praupito. She is the author of the Growth of Feathers, Feathers? Feathers? Feathers trilogy. And I have to say that for me, this one was an auto buoy because I did love uh, her previous work. I did love the trilogy. And what I did love most of all was that we have these kind of dysfunctional families. And this is something that I like because uh, I am all for representation. And it can be tiresome to see perfect families in all books uh, when you know that families aren't that perfect. And I love when she presents us with families that are not uh, the normative. You know what I mean? And this is what I did love most about the trilogy. Also the phoenixes and all the dynamics and the world building and the magic system and everything. And uh, honestly, I was expecting a lot from this book. But it was even better than anything I could have dreamed of. As I say, this one was an auto book because I did love her previous work. And this one blew me away. I have to say that... I was reading the book and I was expecting that it will have some kind of similarities with her first trilogy, but no. It feels like she is a different author, it's a different world, it's a different set of circumstances, it's completely unique, it's amazing, I love the world building, I love the story and the lore that she depicts in this book, I love um, how she constructs the civilizations and the different uh, smithies that we're going to be finding in this book. I did love the mythology, I did love the characters, I did love the plot. Uh, I just couldn't put it down, it's like 400 plus pages and I read it like in one day. Uh, just that it was like sleeping, <laughs> I wanted to, you know, I just couldn't put it down. It was like a, it was a sleep on my feet, it was like I have to finish it. I have to know how it ends. It's amazing, you guys. It's even better than her previous trilogy. We are going to be following our main character, Gwen. Uh, she is trying to be a Valkyr and she is a young girl that wants to prove herself. She feels like whatever she does, she always comes short. Uh, she wants to impress her father, who is kind of absentee, and she also has a grandmother that doesn't expect much from her. So at the very beginning of the book, there's going to be these trials that she has to pass to be a Valkyr, and there is something that's going to happen and she's going to be sent away. And for me, it was amazing to see how she wants. She has this kind of hero complex. Uh, not necessarily because she feels like she wants to be a hero per se, but she feels like she wants to be a hero so she can impress her dad and she can prove herself to be this amazing Valkyr, this amazing person that can do great things and that she can finally be who she is expected to be. And I do love that Will, we are reading the book, uh, she's come to terms with all of this. It's not something that she's going to snap off, but it's something that she will be staring down uh, to this idea of why I want to be this persona and how much this is me and how much this is the expectations of everyone else around me and who I am really in this world and where I want to be. And I love that we have this character who's imperfect and there are moments in which you are thinking, maybe now she's understood, uh, you know, what's expected of her because of her and what she wants to be. And I love that um, sometimes she fails to see that and she keeps on assuming to be that hero that she believes that she has to be in order to satisfy not herself with other people. And this is something that I love, that she doesn't snap out of, out of it, that she has to be confronted with her truths. And that despite the fact that she is willing to hear the truth and she wants to learn it, it's not something that leaves her unscathed. And that it's something, it's all that I'm going to say because I'm not going to make any kind of spoilers. Obviously, she is not going to be alone in this book. She's going to be meeting a prince called Leo. Leo seems to be like a devil my care character. <laughs> I mean, he is like the spur, spur. I mean, he is the third son of the king. So the future prince already has an spur, and he's like, as I say, the spur, spur. So he more or less feels like Ren, that whatever he does, he's going to be failing because he... Ren is expected to fulfill a role and to be much more than she is. And Leo, no one expects anything from him, really. So he's had this life in which he feels that, that he's kind of bored with it. 
And at the very beginning, maybe it will seem like he's like, you know, like, I don't know, this devil my care, as I said at the beginning, but he looks to be like a very promising character. We are going to be having some chapters narrated by him, and we are going to understand how intelligent and amazing this character is, and how much he puts into a charade to, you know, to hide who he truly is, and to confront the people, and he's an amazing character, and I love him to bits. And then we are going to be finding another character called Julian, and I'm not going to be saying much about him because he's surrounded by mystery and lots of things that we are going to be finding as we keep on reading. But yeah, let's say let's say that Gwen and Julian are going to end up being together, not together together, but traveling together because they are going to be trying to rescue Leo who has been kidnapped. And during all this journey, all three characters are going to learn and understand lots of things about the world they're living in, uh, the positions they are occupying, and what the world and their families and everyone expects of them. I have to say that um, I do love that we have this kind of dysfunctional families again. These dynamics, they are not exactly perfect, where you have people who are asking things of you, um, where they're making you be someone who you are not you know they want to be you something as i said that you are not and we're going to be finding characters who want to prove themselves and we're going to be finding characters who are going to try to um use charades to hide how amazing and intelligent they are because they are you know uh yeah i mean i love all the characters in this books all of in this book all of the characters all of my three characters are amazing and I love how far they travel into this in, in the journey, both physically because they discover lots of things um, that add to the world building, and also the world building is very easily understood, and you understand everything, and it feels like like a very cinematic experience for me. Like, you know, you're traveling with them, and it's like you are seeing the world through their eyes, and this is amazing. And I also love um, how they travel far in their own lives and in their own expectations and they come to face very hard truths about what has happened before and what's happening right now and how it's going to affect them. And I love that we have this idea of family found, these people that you travel with, these people that you decide to love and to care for. And I love that we have this uh, enemies to lovers troop and I love Leo. Uh, I have a say that I love Leo. And yeah, I mean, you're going to love these characters. Um, I love also the lore. We are going to be finding a skeletons, kind of zombies animated, but with the ghost of the, of the deceased person. So uh, yeah, something like that. Necromancy, but no, different, amazing. As I say, the world building and the magic and the lore in this book is very powerful. And the adventure and the romance and the characters and everything, I just couldn't put it down. So I will recommend it like 10 over 10 because it's an amazing book and I can hardly wait for the second one. So thank you for watching. Bye.